Welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, now it's time for Off the Press, uh, where we have our quick uh, review of stories making headlines across the country uh, this morning. And uh, we're joined by Mr. Ezekiel Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Always. Uh, and hopefully we're going to have a very interesting conversation on these stories uh, this morning. We're kicking off with the Tribune newspapers this morning. Let's see how many of them we can quickly find. It says here, Labor gives federal government 14 days to reverse petrol and power prices. Also, a court orders uh, resident doctors to resume work. Edo State uh, holds prayer for peaceful poll. Obaseki uh, says no need for violence. It's also on the Tribune this morning, NNPC uh, set up rehabilitation of refineries, or steps up rather, rehabilitation of refineries. Um, other stories that we can also quickly find here. Stop lifting petrol uh, to the north. Uh, PTD orders tanker drivers. Also, armed terrorists now occupy Kishi uh, and uh, Oyo National Park, Ghani Adams alleges. The federal government to create agency for management of recovered assets. And uh, what else can we find? President Buhari promises more inclusiveness as he unveil, unveils Nigeria at 60 logo. That's also on the Tribune newspapers this morning. Five injured, many uh, vehicles destroyed as supporters of Akere Dulu and Jegede clash. We're going to go to uh, Mr. Nyai talk now. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks so much um, again for having me. The Tribune has a lot of stories that um, actually do catch my interest. Some are big stories, some are seemingly smaller stories, but almost more significant. Uh, the NNPC story is very important to me about refineries and privatization and all that. Then uh, our president promising a more inclusive um, government. I, I find that also very interesting. The federal government to create agency for management of um, you know, the received or returned loot and everything. Then there is this issue of um, some people injured in a, an accident uh, because of the clash of the politicians and all that. But let me start with one that um, is a little more instructive, the refineries. We all know that the petrol pump price has been a major problem in Nigeria for as long as you can remember. And then the issue of is there subsidy, is there no subsidy, and the amount of money that we have, um, I don't know if to, what, to use the word spent or squandered on the so-called, um, you know, being able to, to mitigate the, the cost difference and, um, and all that. And um, we ask ourselves, has there been a solution? And the answer is yes. What's the solution? Instead of us importing fuel, and all the cost plus, cost plus, cost plus that come with it and make the pump price high. If we had our crude, you know, refined here in Nigeria, there'd be no question of subsidy. And then we'll be able to have it at a good price. Now, what's the problem? The problem has been one, that the refineries have not been working. And I ask a very simple question. Why have the refineries not been working? Before you get into power, I have contested the governorship of my state twice. And on each occasion, before I go to contest, I do a lot of forensic analysis, data collection. I do the sort of politics that people look at me and laugh and say, guy, you don't know. Look, this is not, this is not politics. You are, you are doing academics. Go and look for money and give people and get power. And each time I hear that, it just bothers me. And that's the sort of politics that we run. Now, for a government to come into power, one of the things you would have had in your think tank is how do we fix the refineries? What have been the problems? What, have, what can we do differently? And you must have had a template because this is any party that does not have a major template on how to fix the refineries is a party that is not coming for governance, but it's coming for politics. So I expected that. Now, all this, we didn't know it was like this until we came in. That is border dash, with all due respect. You can, I know a minimum of 60% of this present government. There are definitely certain things you will never know until you get into power. But those things don't constitute more than 20, 
Because if you do your analysis very well, everything about government, to a great extent, is with the civil servant. And these civil servants are members of your party. They can give you any information that you want. It makes you to sit down and do a structural analysis of the whole system and start to profile solution. By the time you get into power, you are hitting the ground running, okay? And I believe that any government going forward, after five years, you are now telling us how you will fix the refinery by 2023, which is when you are leaving office. Um, I'm actually not very happy with it. So right, let's move I'm on happy to, they have the started story. the journey of wanting to fix the refineries. My prayer is that they are sincere with it and they carry on with it. It doesn't matter. It's about Nigeria. On the, at the end of the day, if they start on the right foot, whoever comes in will be able to continue. So that story is very important to me, amongst right. all the stories. Then the government trying to set up an agency for the management of uh, proceeds of um, recovered loot. I think that when you look at our senior report, when you look at our present realities, when you know that government has no money, and I say this with every sense of responsibility, government has no money. When you look at all those, and when you look at how governments work, how agencies work, where the chief executive is going to have a fleet of cars, is going to have retinue of these and all those things, bloated, 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 you realize that setting up another agency does not really come too close uh, to, to, to appealing to Nigerians. I ask a simple question. Is it practically impossible for the Attorney General to go back to revisit the EFCC Act and amend it so that there is a definite section in the EFCC that is trained it is, it's just like the police will say, we have SARS and they are like crime fighters. Like the Americans will have the, the, the SEAL. We, these are people that, I mean, they are like that strike force that you just don't mess with, okay? Why can't we set up something like that as a department of the EFCC and just amend the EFCC Act? Because it's necessary, absolutely, absolutely. There must be a common, I, I've had the privilege of working closely with um, some people uh, within the National Assembly on this issue of um, recovered loot and then the issue of um, EFCC and the rest. And I, I know they are making a lot of effort and I pray that the efforts they are making, All right. uh, will, they will be able to get through with it. But for me, I think instead of thinking in terms of um, setting up another, another let, the, let the Attorney General Last with the Senate Committee Chairman on uh, Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes, and they, together they will be able to, 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 to have a, 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 a tinkering with the EFCC and such that a special unit is set up and they have common underwriting standards. You don't have a situation where a man goes to Dubai, seizes a property worth maybe about um, $20 million, and he just gives it out at $5 million, and then the person pays him an additional $5 million, and then that is um, done. Because right. if something is worth $20 Let, million and you the... have to give 10, I mean, you, you, make, you make some, it's, it's good business. Yeah, let's, let's uh, move to uh, the, yes. the Vanguard sure newspapers to, uh, to the next, um, uh, next. Yes, there's a, there's a story that I can see on the Vanguard about uh, the NLC drawing a battle line with the federal government with regards to uh, fuel and uh, electricity uh, issues. Uh, Nigeria was divided before Buhari says the presidency. Also, fall crisis looms in the FCT entire north as PTD orders tanker drivers to halt product lifting. FEC OK's new anti-corruption agency. Also, the federal government projects Nigeria's economy to recover in the first quarter of 2021. Nigeria, the most uh, prosperous black nation in the world, says President Muhammad Buhari. And um, also on the Vanguard this morning, U.S. reviews ban on migrant visas as Nigeria meets 90% re requirement. Um, in Edo State, three policemen to man each of the 2,627 polling booths. Uh, police to withdraw odd leaves from VIPs, interagency committee and control room already set up. And um, Nigeria says the federal government will ensure Nigerian traders in Ghana get justice. Um, blasphemy. It is wrong to sentence a 13-year-old to 10 years jail term. UNICEF 
tells the Kano government. The story um, came out yesterday, I believe. Mr. Yantok, please go ahead. Ah, again, I, I wish we were only to review one paper because um, there are so many very, very um, um, appealing stories, uh, important stories, because all these stories are really not really appealing. They are just very important. And um, I would like to look at two. Um, one is um, what people may not really look at at first, and that is um, three policemen to man each of the 2,000-something polling booths in a do state. But that is not what catches my, catches my fancy. It is that of the police to withdraw orderlies from VIPs. Now, I've always asked myself, wh why is it so difficult for the Nigerian police to withdraw the, the, these this, um, orderlies from these so-called VIPs. Now, I'll give you a very simple solution because sometimes we just say things without giving. You know, in the days of GSM, uh, we suffered so much. And at the end of the day, just a little policy made government to make so much money from the GSM you know, uh, evolution, I'll put it that way. Now, Nigeria is under policed. We have major problems with policing, major problems. Now, I ask myself, I would like to propose something to the IGP, and that is that let us have as a major policy private investigators, private security outfits that are trained by police, that are licensed by police, that are coordinated by police, and these people will now take care of VIP you know, um, protection. Two things happen. The very first thing is that a lot of the police that are with the VIPs are withdrawn. The second thing that happens is that these companies that are registering, depending on categories, they give government a lot of money because government is going to make a lot of money. The third thing that happens, I said to now there are even three, there's a sweetener, and that is that these agencies start to recruit people and create employment for Nigerians. So what do we have at the end of the day? Government not spending a dime on recruitment, but having more people because their police have been withdrawn. They state being better police because they are certain categories. Some of them can even be licensed to carry arms, depending on how the police is able to police them. And we need to be able to stop going for cheap solutions to things and start to tell ourselves it can be done. We can do it and it can be done. When these people are put under a very strict supervision and the police is, you know, is, is serious with them, you start to realize that we start to have a body, it's done globally, it's a, a global practice, you know, special, you know, not just investigators, we also have special, you know, uh, security outfits yeah. that are regulated, coordinated, supervised, superintended over by the Nigerian police. Probably right. a special unit is set up to coordinate. So all of a sudden, one unit of the police force is able to oversee several units at different levels of private securities. And this will give the police money. It will create employment for Nigerians. And it will now tell these people, if you must have orderlies, you've got okay. to have a okay. reason to have orderlies. Sorry to but interject you, sir. When you have a situation you, where a commissioner is parading over three, four, five policemen, including his wife, then where are the people that are going to um, yeah. help us? Yeah. Now, we, that we, is we, just we one need, topic We need to, to hasten up a little bit now. so we can cover as many of these stories as possible uh, before we wrap up. Um, so um, do you still want to you know, focus on the uh, vanguard, or we, can we move on? Um, well, I would have liked to say something about us being the most um, prosperous black nation. All right, if you can do that quickly. I think that a statement of faith and not a statement of reality. But instead of condemning that statement, I say amen to it. But not just amen. I say let Nigerians wake up. And it is something in the public sphere. But before we are demystified, let us wake up and actually take hold of that throne because we have all it takes to be the most prosperous 
black nation on earth. But right now, brother, between you and I, uh, it'd be like it'd be so. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the Punch newspapers this morning and see what we can find. Yeah. Uh, once again, another story from the NLC and uh, TUC this time. Uh, tackling uh, the uh, federal government and giving a two-week ultimatum to uh, the federal government. TUC tackles Ngige. NLC issues two-week ultimatum to federal government. Congress mobilizes 79 civil society groups for September 23rd protest. Um, it also here, uh, says the 42 million Nigerians now have identity numbers, says the NIMC. CBN demands details of 12 top Nigerian businessmen and others' uh, domiciliary accounts. Issa Shagay panel accuses Malami of aborting high-profile cases. Um, still on the punch this morning, Ondo APC and PDP supporters clash. Jegede alleges assassination attempt. Police arrest six Ogun headsmen for abducting policewoman and NSCDC um, official. Also uh, this morning on the punch, U.S. reviews visa ban as federal government meets 90% of requirements. And uh, one last one just before we go. Uh, 42 ambassadors await posting 96 days after Senate confirmation. All right. Um, let's let's um, look at all the stories. I'll probably like to take um, two. That's the TUC's to the, to, um, um, uh, TUC story and, of course, the U.S. visa ban. Then I, I happen to have um, a lot of friends that were among the list that were sent in as ambassadors designate. And I feel so sorry for them because you, you, you give somebody an appointment and you even go to the extent of clearing the person and everything. And three months after, he's still sitting back at home. I'm wondering what he's doing. You know, a stage comes when he's, he's become, the, that zeal has been, become dampened, so to speak. And I believe that if these people have been given these responsibilities, they should please, for whatever is worth, be asked to proceed on the assignment. And if the time is not yet for such assignment, you don't need to rush to, 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 to announce their names and things like that. You're putting undue public pressure on them. But to the story, still you see, now, protest is good. Protest has its place in democracy, absolutely so. But I have a lot of reservations concerning the current TUC because, you see, when, when people think that you must hop up with government to be relevant, you probably end up having a conflict of interest because the TUC is set up specifically to protect the interest of an NLC TUC, you know, to protect the interest of workers. And you know that the worker has a box. When you are in bed with the boss, how are you going to be able to look at the boss in the eye and say, sir, this is not right. You are maltreating your workers. And they, they, uh, since after the days of my brother, Ojo Baba, I, the, the NLC, TUC, all of them, they seem to have lost the bite. So right now they are trying to back and um, it will be nice to see what they do after backing. But there's another snag in it. I hope they are aware that the... the, 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 the the, the deal has already been, the act has already been gazetted. And if it has been gazetted about that um, issue of deregulation or removing um, um, uh, money or subsidy and all those things, you, we, we all understand what it means for, 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 for something to be gazetted. It, it means that giving the two weeks, it's probably they don't know about it, but I don't know how they would know about it. They're in government. If to gazette something, it is their staff that were responsible for it. The president does not just gazette. He works with, with, with civil servants. That's the process. So if a thing is gazetted and you give the president two weeks alternate to make them, I don't know if you are giving him two weeks ultimatum to ungazette or to reverse. Or, I think it, it is a procedure that takes more than two weeks. And for them not to make this look like another big joke, I think they should go back home and do their groundwork well and come up with something that makes sense. For instance, why don't you come up with certain things you want the president to do? Instead of saying reverse this, to reverse this is going to be difficult. Incidentally, I'm one of those that is in support of government taking their hands off this so-called subsidy and all the scams involved. But when the government has a perfect opportunity to do it with the goodwill they had, they, blunt, they flaunted it. And it's coming at a time that is really difficult for people to justify their action. 
the tariff hike in, in, in electricity, and then the fuel hike price, and so many things coming up at the same time, the raise in VAT and everything. The government is just not being strategic, yeah. and it bothers me. Somebody says diplomacy is you tell somebody to go to hell, and he actually looks forward to it. Government can achieve all these things. They can, and more. All right. Nigerians are the most understanding set of people I've come across in the whole world. Nigerians are very accommodating. They are very understanding. All right, sir. They just want you to at least take them as human beings. Okay, Thank you so very that's much. That we're about, we're uh, we're, we're out of we're out, we're totally out of time. We are totally out of time. So we're we're just going to quickly share some stories on the business day uh, to wrap up yeah. the um, of course off the press for now. We may not be able yeah. to get your views on it, but we'll quickly share. It says here, foreign investors, uh, PE firms seek one hundred percent stake in Nigerian uh, insurers. Um, also on the business day this morning, uh, virus leaves Nigeria's 41.5 million SMEs vulnerable and made foreign exchange and uh, credit crunch. Prominent African female business leaders speak on uh, success factors. And um, I think these are the major ones that we, we can quickly find uh, here uh, this morning on the business day. Um, Mr. Ezekiel, yeah, talk, thank you so much for speaking with us yes. this morning. And uh, looking forward to having another conversation with you and another review with you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Always. And that has been uh, Off the Press. We'll take a short break and we'll be back.